Hey everyone, Caleb with the Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with uh, what might be the culmination of this playlist, might just be one of another video of this playlist, and that is basically on how to get rid of uh, bookworms. So bookworms, I've already done a few videos on what they are, how to prevent them, that sort of stuff. You can check out that playlist right there, and uh, a lot of info on that. I'm not going to get into that info right now because this is a video on just how to get rid of bookworms that you know that you have right now. I'm talking active bookworms that are eating your book as we speak and that you want to just like thrown a fire uh not the book the bookworm itself so bookworms uh just quick summary though they are the little critters that will like eat into the covers of your books or like basically drill a hole into your book and uh some of them do other stuff some of them it basically depends on the bookworm itself or the bug itself they like eating different sorts of things but with that said though what do you do to get rid of bookworms well there's actually a whole lot of things to get rid of bookworms it's actually pretty simple uh, it's pretty easy depending on what you want to do so for me i personally am a fan of something called ozone uh, ozone you can't buy it if you're in california because california uh, i call it killjoy cali they get rid of everything that's fun uh, but ozone is something that you can buy in every other state basically there are things called ozone generators and ozone generators they put out something called ozone and that's why they generate ozone ozone generator huh makes sense you guys probably have heard about ozone it's what's in the ozone layer of the atmosphere keeps us safe but in addition to keeping us safe from uh, uv rays it actually can hurt us if we're exposed to it because ozone is actually three oxygen molecules so oxygen sounds safe we are safe with something that has two ozone sorry two oxygen molecules that's the air that we breathe but three oxygen molecules is ozone so it's o3 uh, o2 is what we breathe o3 is the dangerous stuff and o3 ozone it is dangerous to us because the third oxygen molecule, it likes hitting stuff and then it'll stick to that other thing. So like books are made of carbon, so it'll instantly stick to that and be like, oh yes, carbon, my best friend. And it'll hook onto that. And the same thing happens with humans or bugs and all, all that sort of stuff. The ozone will try to hook onto the carbon in our bodies or whatever else is in our bodies that reacts with oxygen. And it'll do that and that actually causes damage to us, other living beings. And it even causes damage to books and plants and even computers. But uh, it actually can be a great way to get rid of bugs. People used to get rid of bugs, get rid of mold, get rid of a whole lot of things and it works very very well for me i use it as well to get rid of odors it is like one of my favorite odor removal things like out there because it works so stinking well so if you guys have a book that has bookworms in it ozone as i was saying can work pretty well like if you guys know that the bookworm is like on page 463 that's what i opened up to here if you know it's on that open up to that uh, page run your ozone generator and it is either going to kill the bug kill its larva that sort of stuff it's probably going to do that you're going to have to spend a while uh, exposing it to that it'll take potentially hours uh, but it's one of the more hands-free ways that you can do it uh, i recommend having it in a separate room or even in a box because you don't want to be breathing that in you don't want it around your pets your family all that sort of stuff it is something that can be dam uh, damaging to you dangerous to you it can actually if you expose it to toddlers it can like hurt them in the long run as well uh, so definitely it's not something to be trifled with uh, hence why california did ban it because uh, at least for consum consumers uh, so there are some reasons for it but it is a very useful thing that i think a lot of people should have access to because it works so well of course there are a lot of issues with it but there's issues with everything just think about something like roundup there's a lot of issues to it but it works very well in the right hand so with that said uh, other people a lot of people swear by this other method is like you take your book that has the bookworms right now you take it you put it in a, like a sealed plastic box put it in there and then you add uh, some like uh, paper towels or pieces of cloth or something that are soaked in uh, either camphor, uh, nepheline, naphthalene, sorry I, I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, uh, and uh, turpentine. Those are some things that people use. Other people use stuff like kerosene, gasoline, stuff like that. Uh, I don't recommend using kerosene and gasoline because they're more oily and uh, because they're a little more oily the scent sort of sticks a little bit more but there's a lot of things that you can use. There are actually products out there that you can use to get rid of bookworms, lots of stuff, but you don't really necessarily have to do that. I've even heard of people that use vinegar to get rid of bugs because the vinegar, like the acidity that it gets into the air, the bugs don't like that. So they're like, yep, I'm out of here. Bye, guys. Uh, if it gets enough vinegar uh, smell around the books. And uh, if you guys do something like apple cider vinegar, uh, I've seen people use this with books. I use it on so many things because it's magical and awesome. But apple cider vinegar, if you just do a few uh, paper towels or something that has apple cider vinegar on it and put it around the book, not only is it going to get rid of a lot of odors, but it's probably going to get rid of your books as well. Sorry, your bugs as well. Uh, 
which is what you want. Uh, of course, if one thing doesn't work, you can test out the other thing. Uh, another thing that you can do to get rid of the bookworms is literally pick them out. That isn't what I would personally recommend. Like, yes, I would do it, but it's not like the number one thing I do because it's almost guaranteed that you're going to miss some because like there's going to be some that might be in the spine of your book or on a page that you didn't check or you're, as you're pulling them out, there might be one that races by and hides somewhere else. It depends on how extensive your bookworm damage is. If your bookworm damage is just like this one right here, uh, if you guys haven't seen that video just yet, I showed you guys the damage. It just is like one single hole. That'd be an easy bookworm to get out, but uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. Of course, there are quite a few other things that you can do besides that. Uh, rubbing alcohol will kill bugs. There are so many things that will kill bugs, but uh, in the long term though, the best thing that you can do to get rid of Bookworms is low, have like lower humidity. Uh, bugs will die if the humidity is low enough. So that's another thing that you can do. And it's something that I recommend having for your books in general is have your humidity as not as low as you can possibly get it because once it gets too low, it does damage your books and it hurts you. But um, lower humidity will get rid of bugs and make sure that they don't take over your books, but your bookshelves in the first place. Uh, lower humidity is between 30% and 50%. I'm going to have a link to a video right there on it um, on how you should properly store your books because like they say uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure it's better to prevent something from happening in the first place than it is to try to deal with the ramifications and try to take care of the damage because if you make sure that it doesn't happen you don't have the damage you don't have the like i have to do something right now you have the entire fact of if you prevent it you don't have to worry about it ever again besides just constant uh, preventative maintenance as opposed to if you have an emergency it's an emergency you have to deal with it now and it's already causing damage so with all that said and done though guys there's some uh, there's a quite a few other things that you can do to get rid of bookworms um those are just some of the things that you can do there's a lot of other things but again prevention is so much more important so be sure to check out that other video i have a playlist on bookworms including how to prevent bookworms from taking over right there be sure to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one